Okay, so let's talk about the stereo specificity of an E2 reaction. It involves, again, that the leaving group and your hydrogen must be this word, anti-periplanar. Now, it turns out back in the day when I took OCHEM, we called it anti-coplanar. They've kind of revised that a little bit here, but here we've got our alpha carbon. So, and this is one of the beta carbons. So, and it turns out what anti-coplanar would mean that the leaving group, the bromine in this case, and the hydrogen on the beta carbon have to be 180 degrees apart. That's what anti-coplanar means. So they're in the same plane, but point in opposite directions. Well, it turns out anti-periplanar, on the other hand, says that it doesn't have to be exactly 180 degrees, but it does have to be close. And it turns out there's just a little bit of leeway here on E2 reactions. So it turns out anti-periplanar is a better term than anti-coplanar. Uh, the other ways you might recognize anti-coplanar from anti-periplanar, uh, they don't have to be in the plane here, but here if I have the bromine on a dash pointing down, then I need the hydrogen on the beta carbon to be a wedge pointing up. So same thing down here, if I've got the leaving group, in this case the bromine on the wedge pointing down, then I would need the hydrogen on the dash pointing up to be approximately 180 degrees apart. And the idea is that the reaction only takes place when the hydrogen is 180 degrees away, or at least approximately 180 degrees away, anti-periplanar to the leaving group. If it's not there, uh, as long as the single bond's not part of a ring, it'll rotate until it is. And when it reaches that confirmation, that's when the reaction can actually happen. This will have some profound effects on which alkenes we can form when E and Z are options. So let's use an example here to look at the stereospecificity involved here. So our leaving group here is iodine, and it's a wedge pointing up. So we've got two beta carbons, so one here, but there's no hydrogens on that carbon and then a beta carbon here, and that beta carbon has two hydrogens. And when it turns out your beta carbon's got two hydrogens, if you can form E or Z, it turns out you'll typically get both. So if we look at that beta carbon a little more closely here, again, with the iodine leaving group on the wedge pointing up, the hydrogen I can deprotonate has to be on the dash pointing down. That's the one that points 180 degrees away from the iodine. In this case, then our methoxide strong base is gonna come and deprotonate that hydrogen, freeing those electrons up to form the pi bond and kicking off the leaving group. So, and if we look here, you've got this benzene ring and this methyl group, and right now they're kind of like 180 degrees apart as well. Well, as soon as we form the pi bond right there, they're gonna get locked being 180 degrees apart, and we'll find out that this would lead to the E isomer formation. So once we form the pi bond, double bonds don't rotate, and it's you know, whatever confirmation it has to adopt while reacting, that's the confirmation it gets locked into as an alkene. And so in this case, with that blue hydrogen right there, so that's the one that was antiperiplanar, and that's going to, deprotonating that one leads to the E product. Now, if we rotate this bond around, so in this case, if we rotate it to where this red hydrogen was in the dashed position, the blue hydrogen goes to where that methyl group is, and the methyl group's going to go around to where the red hydrogen used to be. So if you look, it is this single bond right here that we're actually rotating. So we'll find out that we get this confirmation that we see down below. And now it's the red hydrogen that is actually in position to get deprotonated. It's now the anti-periplanar one. And so in this case, so again, our strong base is gonna come deprotonate, free up the electrons to form the pi bond and kick off the leaving group. Now, if we take a closer look at this here, so again, we have this benzene ring, but now this benzene ring is trans to this hydrogen. And as soon as we form the pi bond, they're gonna get locked being trans. So there's that hydrogen right here, and the benzene ring and the hydrogen are end up trans in this case. And overall, this ends up being the Z isomer. So both those hydrons uh, had a chance to end up antiperiplanar. One led to the E isomer, one led to the Z. So as long as a single bond's not part of a ring, it'll have the opportunity to rotate freely, uh, and each hydrogen will get a chance to be antiperiplanar to the leaving group, giving us, in this case, the option to form both the E and Z isomers. The E being uh, more stable due to sterics is the major product, the Z is the minor. So let's take a look at another example here. So this one's a little similar to the last one we did, but just a big key difference. So there's our alpha carbon. Again, we've got a beta carbon off the left here, but he doesn't have any hydrogen, so we can't do elimination on that side. And then we've got a beta carbon over here, and he's got one hydrogen, and that hydrogen is on the dashed position right there. And if we look here, the iodine here and the hydrogen here are presently anti-periplanar. This is in a confirmation in which the E2 reaction can actually happen. So we don't have to rotate it around or anything. It's already in the correct confirmation. So, and we'll just come and deprotonate that hydrogen, freeze up these electrons for pi bond formation, kicks off the leaving group. So 
And as an alkene, it's going to get locked in this conformation. And I can see that the benzene ring here and this propyl group here are going to be trans to each other, just as they are here for the E isomer. So with only one beta hydrogen, it's not like I can rotate around and have another hydrogen get deprotonated. There's not another one. So that's the only hydrogen that is available as a beta hydrogen, and it only forms the E product. We will not get the Z product at all in this case. So when you've only got one beta hydrogen, you've got to be careful. If E and Z are possible, you're only going to get one and not the other, and it depends on the conformation. You're just, but the key is getting that hydrogen anti-periplanar to the leaving group and then getting it locked in that conformation as an alkene. So let's switch it up just a little bit. So this uh, reactant similar to the last one, but now the iodine leaving group's on the dashed position. So the beta carbon on the left, again, doesn't have any hydrogens, but the beta carbon on the right has got one, and it's also on a dash here. So right now in this conformation, it is not anti-periplanar to my leaving group. So I'm going to need to rotate this bond, and it's again at the bond between alpha and beta that we're going to rotate here. And so in this case, to get that hydrogen anti planar, that would be the wedge position. So I'm going to move it to that position. I'll move that methyl group all the way around to where the propyl group is. And then I'll move the propyl group into the dashed position. So, and in this case, <clears throat> if we see the way that happens, that's what I've done down here below. So here again, the hydrogen's in the wedge position. And it's now anti periplanar to the iodine. So the methyl's now in the plane over here. And the propyl's now on the dashed position. So but the key is that the hydrogen and the leaving group are anti periplanar to each other. And so now methoxide can come in and deprotonate, frees up the electrons to form the pi bond, kicks off the leaving group. So, and we'll get our product. Now, if we take a look here, this benzene ring right here and this methyl group right here, they're 180 degrees opposite. And so they're gonna get locked in the trans, uh, being trans to each other. So this again, benzene ring and this methyl group are gonna end up trans to each other, not cis to each other. Well, it turns out, you know, the benzene ring has the priority on this side, but the propyl group has the priority on this side. So that's why this is the Z isomer. So, but in this case, with again, only one beta hydrogen, we only get one product. We're only gonna get the Z here. We don't get the E product at all. So again, this is the uh, consequence of the stereospecificity here of an E2 reaction. The idea that the H in the leaving group have to be anti-periplanar. Okay, so now we've, that we've identified what anti-periplanar means, I want to return back to this example that was an uh, exception for Zaitsev's rule. And in this case, the chlorine here is a wedge, but it's on a cyclohexane ring. And we got a beta carbon right here, and a beta carbon right here. And if we draw in the relevant hydrogens, we got one as a wedge right here. And then this beta carbon's got both a wedge hydrogen and a dashed hydrogen. Let's draw that a little better. So in this case, we said that on a cyclohexane ring, the hydrogen of relevance on the beta carbon has to be trans to the leaving group. With the leaving group chlorine here on the wedge, I need a hydrogen on the dash. This one over here will not work. And we know, will not be able to form the double bond in that location. So that's why this product's not going to be observed here. So it turns out to be anti-periplanar, you've got to have a trans hydrogen. And if we look at cyclohexane, uh, the most common conformation we'll adopt, the lowest energy is the chair conformations. So if we take a look at those, we can explain what the deal is going on here with anti-periplanar. Uh, but the first thing is that you must realize that the single bond between the alpha and beta carbons is part of a ring, so it's not free to rotate freely uh, around uh, much at all. And so if a hydrogen is not antiperiplanar, it's never going to be antiperiplanar. I can't just rotate it till it is like we did in previous examples. So it doesn't work on a ring like that. So in this case, it's only this hydrogen again, this one on the dash, that's antiperiplanar, never has a chance of being antiperiplanar. And that's why the double bond can only form in this location. So if we take a look at what's going on in the chair conformation here. So here I've put the carbon with the chlorine, and the chlorine's a wedge, so I have it pointing up. And in this case, that's an equatorial position. So the hydrogen of interest here uh, on uh, let's look at the methyl group I guess first and it's pointing down and that's also equatorial here and then on this beta carbon over here we've got two hydrogens we've got uh, both the wedge and the dash so I've drawn the one as the dash the relevant one there's also one there that's not going to get used in the reaction that's the wedged one so but in this case it turns out when your leaving group is equatorial anti periplanar is impossible so we've got to look at the corresponding chair flip uh, and in this case it's only when your leaving group is axial that anti periplanar 
uh, relationship to the hydrogen on the beta carbon is even possible. And so in this case, with the chlorine pointing straight up, so I've got a hydrogen right here pointing straight down. That's anti-periplanar. And we can see why on the other beta carbon that has the methyl group, its hydrogen is in the equatorial position pointing up right there, and that's definitely not anti-periplanar, and that's why it can't be used in an E2 mechanism here. So if we were going to show the mechanism here, we'd have our strong base coming in. So, and it's going to come in and deprotonate this hydrogen, freeze up these electrons to form the pi bond, kicks off the leaving group. I highly suggest you realize, uh, you know, recognize that uh, you've got two chair conformations. It's only the one with the leaving group in the axial where the reaction can actually take place. And I highly suggest you recognize what the E2 reaction looks like on a cyclohexane chair conformation just as we've drawn it here. So, but again, we're only going to get the one product here. Turns out that is the Hoffman or anti zaitsev product. We don't get the Zaitsev product at all. No anti-periplanar hydrogen.